Welcome again to the September TUG 2020. So for today's agenda, it's going to be pretty standard. We're going to do a quick welcome, get to know a member. So if you would like to volunteer for the get to know a member, please let us know. They're super easy questions. Don't worry about anything complicated. Um, and then Mr. Josh is going to be talking about um, some metrics for COVID data. And then we had a last minute change. Uh, so Luke is going to be presenting next week, but Spencer is going to be talking about an introduction to Sports Viz Sunday, which is one of the Tableau community um, events, outreaches type things. So it's gonna be really great to hear from him. And then we'll close off with the best thing I learned slash group therapy. And that is if you have any questions um, that you're just stuck on something and you wanna like chat it out with us, we're definitely open to helping you learn something or if you've got a tip or a tidbit that you learned, even if it's something super basic, um, there's all levels of, you know, skill sets. So from beginner to advanced. So if you, if it saves you a minute, then feel free to share it with us because it might save someone else a few minutes. All right, so we've got some interesting upcoming events. <laughs> it looks like everything is happening that week of October, the first week of October. So big news or big event is going to be the Tableau Conference-ish. We'll, um, I'll talk about that in a minute. Next thing is the She Talks data. And uh, Serena, did you want to comment about this at all or? Uh, Sorry, just I put you on the spot. Attend, <laughs> it's super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there we go. Um, and that's on October 7th from 5 to 6, and the link for the sign up is there. Again, Women Who Code is also October 7th, so you can have a really full day on October 7th. And then our next uh, October TC TUG is October 22nd, so be sure to sign up for that as well. Okay, so Tableau Conference ish. So Obviously, things have been pretty crazy this year with all of the COVID stuff. And so this is Tableau's um, answer or response to, uh, or instead of having a conference, an in-person conference, we're going to be doing a virtual one. So first thing, obviously, you need to sign up and register for it. And the link is right there. Um, the dates are the 6th through the 8th, and it's around 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. kind of in there. And the official hashtag this year is hashtag data20. So feel free to post about it or, you know, follow the hashtag if you want to um, see all the cool stuff happening. So what is Tableau Conference? Um, it's an event where presenters are speaking about all different things related to Tableau and data analytics and just data in general. So we, after you register and sign up and sign in all, the, all that fun stuff, there is the option to look at kind of like the schedule for it. You can hover over the different events and see kind of like what you might be interested in. Um, obviously, there's some really great content from Neil deGrasse Tyson and all, all of the, the data dev team. And so you just click on the add to my watch list and then it gets added to your list and it's just like any other uh, meeting. So I'm super excited for this year because, you know, sometimes it can be difficult to convince your boss to let you leave for a week. And so this is a great opportunity mm -hmm. to just take the, you know, I've got an hour in between these two meetings or I, I can, I really want to see this one, but I need to work on this project or do those types of things. So you can definitely, you know, fit it into your schedule or fit anything and everything into your schedule. Um, there's also the option to search for things specifically if you, know of someone that's speaking or want to have a specific topic, this is a little bit easier way to find something um, that will help you figure out whatever role or whatever skill set that you have, there is definitely something out there for you. Next thing I want to highlight is brain dates. So this is um, something that is pretty exciting. Um, I think it's a relatively new thing. I'm not sure. Um, kind of the last couple of years. Yeah, so within the last few years, they've done these things where it's just, it's smaller groups of people who want to get together and talk about some pretty cool ideas. Uh, feel free, if there's something that you're passionate about or want to talk about, or even if it's something that you're like, hey, I need some input on this idea, or I want to just chat about what would be a good way to go about 
doing something, feel free to, you know, search for a topic or set up your own topic. Um, and they have asked us to try and use the TC tug as a, um, just an identifier to help us show that we are engaged in supporting from the community. And then last, we've got IronViz. So if you don't know what IronViz is, it's basically competitive dashboard building, which when I first started doing Tableau, I was like, what is this thing? Like, that sounds so, so crazy, but it's a really awesome opportunity to see some really great people in the community present on how they go about taking a data set and presenting it in a very pretty <laughs> and organized way. Um, so there is a kind of like a, a funnel competition or like you have to compete and there's rounds to it. And so this is the, the final, uh, final round, <laughs> I guess, of it. And again, that is October 7th, uh, 1.30 to 2.15. And also, if you um, haven't already, I'd recommend going out to the Tableau Public and looking at the submitted um, or the submissions for it because there's some really great content out there and some it can definitely spark some ideas about you know what you could do for your next biz. Next um, we've got a job announcement from Serena. Um, before I, I talk about that and if you mentioned this Katrina I'm sorry but I want to drive it home that it's free the Tableau conference oh, yes. <laughs> is free um, to attend virtually and so they're bringing back uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And also I just saw earlier today, John Legend is gonna do something virtual too. So, um, so there's no excuse not to participate in this and try to make it as, as fun as it possibly can be without actually being together. So, all right, so yes. Um, so this particular moment here isn't all about this job announcement with Carrot Health, um, but more about if anyone else has announcements about other jobs or events that they wanna quick share with the group, now's the time to do that. And I'll start it off by saying that I, I know that Carrot Health has a, um, uh, an opening. They're looking for a replacement right now to lead a data team. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, Probably, that's probably the best best place. Reach out to me on LinkedIn, and I will hook you up with who to get more details um, from about that. Does anybody else have any any events or job openings or just other general relevant announcements they'd like to share with the group? Feel free to unmute yourself. You don't have to raise your hand or wait for an invitation. Just shout it out. About a week or two ago, um, another <clears throat> local to the Twin Cities company, uh, Razor Marketing, uh, also ha is looking for a, um, a very Tableau-centric report developer, um, lots, of, lots of freedom and, and doing design and, and leading some pretty strategic conversations. So um, if interested, you can feel free to reach out to myself on LinkedIn. I can get you in contact with the right people or check out our Twin Cities Tug uh, LinkedIn community and you'll see the job posting there. Thank you. Um, on that note, I'll also make a call for the Get to Know a Member. Would anyone like to volunteer? Again, just a super simple, just want to say hi. Either volunteer or we'll pick somebody at random. All right, I'm gonna scroll through this list and pick someone, Katrina. Hey, I can jump in. It, or, okay, great. Yeah, we, I can we'll go. do both of you. So <laughs> let's go do, ahead. Um, yeah, I'll start. Uh, so my name is Brandon. Um, I work for the Bluebird Group, which is a vendor consulting agency. We do a lot of business with Target and Best Buy. Uh, I'm I've been there for about a year now, and I. I'm handling a lot of different, uh, you know, process and data implementation. So uh, right now, technically, my role is director of operations. Um, we've been doing a lot of, uh, you know, building out in Tableau across sales analysis, inventory analysis, um, lots of different things on that front. And I've been using Tableau for probably about four months, five months. Um, 
I think what I'm good at in Tableau is building a lot of different things that, that uh, are fun and exciting. I think that um, one thing that really is a pain point for me is just different, looking at different time frames at once um, or automatically. Uh, that's been pretty difficult for me, but I've had a ton of fun with different maps, uh, you know, different charts, different ways to, to get the, the team the data that they need. And that's, that's my story. Great. Yeah, dates can be pretty tricky sometimes, but if you want to, feel free to save your question for the, um, the later content. Was there someone else who volunteered? Sorry, I didn't catch who that was. Yeah, I did. Um, my name is Marcia Archibald. I work for Land O'Lakes and I'm part of the supply chain analytics team. So I work with the supply chain team to understand how we could probably reconfigure the network to get maybe products moving more efficiently from the point of manufacturing to the customer point. And I'm trying to do more work with the data science and innovation teams. How long have I been using Tableau? Um, I guess about seven years. And the type of data I analyze with Tableau would be a lot of sales data, transportation data, um, projections, just trying to understand the supply chain more. What am I good at in Tableau? Um, I like creating maps and layering in different pieces of information and seeing how we can actually bring the data alive, just to sound very corny, I guess. And what Tableau features do I struggle with? Believe it or not, is sometimes when I'm doing that visual, bringing in, um, like trying to do joint and stuff, it's kind of tricky for me to do the union in the, the UI there, as opposed to maybe if I'm accessing a database, I could do it there. So something simply simple I haven't caught on as yet. Yeah. Well, thanks you two for volunteering and sharing. And um, with that, I am going to pass it over to Josh for his presentation. Hello. Thanks, Katrina. I'm Josh Wilson. Um, let me pull up my screen. All right, can you see it? So please be on the lookout for this. Yep. Is that a yes? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Super. Um, so hi, I'm Josh Wilson. Um, I start off with, with my background and then kind of why, why I'm speaking in front of you today. Um, so I've career wise, I've had, I've had two careers, I think. Um, my, my first career was, was with Deloitte Consulting for 12 years. I, towards the, the back half of that, I was a project management and agile coach. I, I focused on Tableau. I've been using Tableau for the past six years or so. Um, with Deloitte, it was, it was more around project management and status reporting metrics and was, was known for, uh, for doing that. Uh, but I really wanted to, to focus more on people, uh, data, and analyzing and visualizing people data. And so more recently, I've, I've, been, I've been going out on my own. I've been freelancing, independent contractor, and doing more around market research. Uh, lately, I've, I've been doing uh, a number of diversity and inclusion surveys for, for a handful of um, global advertisement uh, companies and that's been that's been pretty pretty cool I really enjoy doing that um, personally I'm, I'm married I have two kids uh, one is a 20 my 22 month old daughter and the others my 12 year old border collie he was my first child um, I live in Chicago and I, I'm originally from Ohio 
and um, for for three years I was in Berlin until until last October. So that's where I uh, wrapped up my career with Deloitte and then moved back to Chicago. So and and maybe I'll, I'll talk about um, so what I'm what I'm good at with Tableau. Um, I'm I'm good at kind of visualizing. Um, I would say like data communication and like what's 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 the message you know what what are we trying to communicate and how do we how do we get to that um, to that point that's that's really kind of getting getting the message across. Some things that I, I struggle with are level of detail calculations, which I'm I, every time I feel like I've I've got a handle on it, then I, I come across another situation where I'm like I can't figure it out for some reason. <laughs> it takes me a while. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Um, so what we're going to talk about, first of all, you know, this is this, so I built a dashboard, it's, it's, on, it's on Tableau Public, and that's going to be kind of the focus, um, but it's, it's around small multiples. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about what, what, what are small multiples, um, why did I choose to, to do this dashboard on, on COVID-19 data, um, what, was, what was my process, and I'm, I want to focus on things that would be useful for, for you, um, including uh, points that I got kind of stuck, um, any, any sorts of tips and tricks or other things that I learned along the way, um, and also just uh, uh, tell you about a couple resources that I found that might be helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to, to, to jump in. I know I want to keep this interactive, um, so, so please feel free to um, let me know if you, if you have any questions. So what are small multiples? Well, they're, they're a way to get a lot of information into into a visualization um, where, where it might not be easy to kind of communicate all of this um, in, a, in a very succinct way, but we can kind of break it out. Um, and it, here's a couple of examples I pulled off of Tableau Public, one around NBA and, and LeBron James shot patterns um, in different years. And then there was another one that I thought looked pretty cool around the economic empowerment of, of women so you can kind of see where you have all these little individual charts. Um, if they're also called uh, panel charts or, or trellis charts or, or tile charts, there's a number of names for them. They're all these, these little um, individual charts that you can see and interact with. So that's what that's what small multiples are. And how do we how do we create them? We need to to use the the discrete, or and I'll show you this um, the or the, the blue pills to, we need a way to tell Tableau kind of how to arrange the, the rows and columns. And so that we can do that a couple of ways. Uh, one is, is by using calculated fields, which is, I, I would say probably more, more common what I've, what I've seen. And that's what the, the, the two that I just showed were using. Um, but we can also use, and this is what, what I did, um, you can use kind of a predetermined grid where we just say, okay, I want, and this is gonna, I'm gonna show you mine. This has all, all of the states in the US. So I say, okay, I want Alaska at, at one, 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 one. Those are the, those are the coordinates, or, you know, and kind of plot out all of the, all of the states um, and, and essentially tell Tableau exactly where you want them to go. Um, so I'm gonna I'll pull up what my dashboard looks like, just so you can kind of see where, where we're heading with this. Um, and so, so kind of the, the reason that I, let me, let me flip this back. There are a lot of, you know, stories and, and discussion in the news about COVID tests and cases. And you know, there's this question, you know, do, do tests that came up in my mind, okay, well, do tests, do more tests really lead to more cases? And, you know, I had, I had a, a, a hunch on that, but, but I thought, you know, what is the data saying? And I'd also been looking for an excuse to, to do small multiples uh, chart. So um, what I really wanted to see was, for each state, kind of, you know, are are tests going going this way, and cases going that way, or are they both going this way, or which, you know, what does what does it look like? And so that was that was kind of my goal with this. I have the the small multiple charts, kind of the the hero up here, and then and then ability to to drill down into an individual state. If you want to see, okay, let's see for Florida, um, what what are the the tests and the and the cases looking like? And I also put in some other other things like. Um, bringing in, in other other metrics, so that's kind of where where I where I ended up, um, and I'll show you kind of how I how I got there. So I I started with um, the the data I used was coming from the COVID tracking project. 
uh, I think a lot of sources use New York Times. Um, and I, I, looked at, I looked at New York Times data and, and, and COVID tracking projects. Um, I like the way that the, the data was formatted from the COVID tracking project. So that's what I used. Um, so I just downloaded the CSV and then got, got the data. So I got my, got my COVID data. And now, now it's a question of how do I kind of arrange it in that, in that grid, right? And I, I found a, uh, a grid uh, online that somebody, somebody had done. And it's, it's, it's super, super easy. I had done small multiples in the past uh, with using kind of the, the formulaic route, which I can, I can show you an example of that as well. Um, it's a little more difficult. So I was pleasantly surprised with, with how easy this, this was. All you need is, is a table like this, which, which just says, okay, what, what, what are the things that are going into the small multiples and uh, where, where do you want them? What, what row and what column? And you can, so I, you know, I got this online, but you could, you could create it uh, yourself um, pretty, pretty, pretty easily. So from there, I just, I, I used Tableau Prep Builder. I got my, my COVID data, I got my, my state grid, and just join join those on the state, and that's that's really all there is to it as far as as far as uh, getting the data in that you need, um, kind of in order to 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 plot it on this on this grid that that, uh, that you see here. Now, question is, okay, how do we how do we actually kind of bring bring this stuff in here? Well, I've got my my row and my column. That's that's my my grid points. So I bring my row into row and column into column. And these are those, those discrete blue pills that I'm talking about. And in this case, we're, 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 we're telling Tableau, okay, we want it to go, you know, what's, what's in, in row number one and column number one. <clears throat> um, and what, what's in each of these places. So we can already start to see, okay, the, it works, right? It, it looks like looks like a map of the U.S. where, where we wanted to, to to put everything. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna pull in the so the total total test results increase was the like how many how many tests uh, that was the the name of that one. So I'll I'll pull that one in, and I want to see this over time. So I'm gonna pull in my my date as well. And actually, I'm gonna right click. So when I right click, then I get the option of how I want to bring it in. I'm gonna bring it in at the day level. Okay, let me flip this to entire view. So now we can start to see, okay, we got, we got our lines in here for number of tests for, for each of the states. Looks like the grid came in correctly. Um, but we can see a couple of, couple of things. Um, one is that there, there are these random sorts of um, nose dives into negatives. So whatever, let's see what state this was. I think it might be Texas. Yeah, so, so for whatever reason, Texas on, on September 14th reported negative 336,000 cases or, or tests rather. Um, I think there were just, there were some corrections that take place. Um, and, and the nice thing is if you look on the, in this case, on the COVID tracking projects website, it, it kind of lists out some detail uh, for each of the states. So probably in there, we'll explain where, that, where that's coming from. But it's not something that I want in my, in my data set. So that was one thing that I had to overcome uh, was to just kind of get, get rid of the negatives. So to, to do that, I, I just, Create a calculation that said, okay, if, if it's negative, um, then then didn't change it to zero because <laughs> I don't want it. And I did some research, and, and Johns Hopkins was doing the same thing. So I thought if, if Johns Hopkins is doing it, then I can do it too. Okay, so we got rid of the the negatives. Um, another thing we Amen. can see is that some of these some of these are a lot some some of these lines are a lot bigger than the others. Um, so you can see like California is kind of stealing the, the show here. Um, it looks like prob probably the max, uh, you yeah, know, because the, the, the axis is, is going to be uniform. We can't, we can't change it to say, 
independent axis for, for each row or each, each column. And that's going to get us part way there. But still, if you're in California's row, uh, California's going to set that upper, upper limit and everybody else is going to be kind of, kind of dwarfed on that, on that same axis. So, so I knew I wanted to kind of, I wanted to scale each one, which can be a little bit tricky, I think, from a, from a, from a data communication perspective, because you don't want people to think that they're on the same axis. And that's, that's often the, uh, the perception. Um, so, so the, what I, what I ended up doing was I, there's, there's in the small multiples chart, there's no, numbers here um, you know, there's no there's no axis I just I just wanted to see kind of what what the lines look like and then give the ability to, to kind of click and, and drill down and I also uh, kind of put a disclaimer uh, in there so so hopefully that didn't confuse anyone but like I said I just wanted to see kind of what what each of these looked like so so I had to so that was one thing I knew I had to do was, was to scale it and I also wanted to do um, the moving average, so so it wasn't like you know so many um, some of these these you know big peaks and just kind of all over the place lines. Um, so in order to do that, um, so so I have my I did so I so I did a you know a moving average, and it, and so to do that that's you know you can go to add table calculation and do uh, moving, yeah, moving calculation. And I want to look at seven days is what I did for my moving average. Okay. And, and then I took this, so one nice thing you can do is, let's say you create a, a table calculation like this, then you can, you can go to edit and shelf and I did a copy and paste and, and created a, a moving average calculation that I that I could save and, and and then reuse. Okay, so now I knew now I wanted to scale this 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 moving average calculation, and what I did um, in order to in order to get that was I, I used what I <laughs> what what my what my challenge in Tableau is I used a uh, level of detail calculations. So I looked at the, the, the maximum of, of the overall chart because that was, so, so let's say it's probably California. So, so I wanted to know, okay, if California is, is the max, then um, you know, that's gonna be kind of the upper limit for, for everyone. And I want everyone to be scaled to that, for, for each state to be scaled to that, whatever that California number was. So that was that was this maximum of, of of all states, and then I divided that by the max of of each individual state. And to so to do that, total test results increase max overall. If you're if you're if you're not familiar with with uh, level of detail calculations, what we what what they are is it's a calculation that's different than the level of detail that we're looking at in, in the view. So I can say, I just, I want us, I want us to be fixed for, and if I don't put any, any dimensions here, it means for the entire data set, I just want the maximum of, of, of my moving average calculation here. What's, where, whatever that max is for, for any state, um, that's just, I want that, uh, that's what I want the calculation to be, regardless of if I'm looking at all states or no matter what I'm looking at in this in this view, um, just give me what that what that number is. And then at the state level, same calculation, but I, I fix it at the state level. So for whatever individual state, um, what's that what's that max? So that's how I, I got uh, I got this to scale so that each each of the lines um, was kind of filling up it, its its in own individual square, and it would look like like it would if we were if we were only looking at a, at a particular state. You know, I wanted it to be kind of okay. What is what is this line, and what is what is this line? You know, looking at, at kind of filling its its individual sorts of squares. Um, 
So that's how I kind of how I got that how I got that shape. And I did that for I uh, did it for tests, for cases, for hospitalizations, for on ventilator, and and for deaths. So that like one of my goals was was to kind of put put the data out there and allow people to analyze it and explore it and and come to their own sorts of conclusions. Um, you know, beyond my 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 clickbaity title, it was more of just kind of you know what's 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 the data saying, and you know, I just said what what questions do you have. Um, it's like another one that was interesting was looking at looking at cases and deaths. I, like I, I almost I would look at this a lot to see, okay, if it, or more people are more people are getting infected, but is it is it really leading to more deaths? So but that was that was another interesting one to to kind of explore. Are there any any questions so far? I've been talking quite a lot. I just wanted to call out, Josh. I really like how you kind of combined the legend and the filters in the mm. same little. Uh, it's a very tidy way of doing that. Nice work. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So I used I used parameters um, for this. Um, and so I have um, created a separate sort of yeah parameters called a COVID metric one and metric two. Those are the two things that that you can you can look at. And and then depending on what you select, you know, if you, if you select tests, you want to see tests, then it pulls in that 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 test calculation um, or cases. It pulls in the the cases one. So that's that's a nice way to use use parameter use parameters to to give your user the option to kind of pick between a number of different calculations. And then yeah, I, I put them over the felt over the uh, overlaid over the. Um, Whatever, whatever was there, <laughs> so that yeah, you could see exactly what you know what what the gray was because you you were you were selecting it in the drop down. Um, I can talk about some things that I kind of learned, and I um, I'm not sure how much time I have left. So if I'm like getting long, then somebody somebody tell me, <laughs> Katrina. I don't know if you're keeping. Track of time. Um, You're good. Okay. How much time do I have? Um, let me check. Okay. Let me know if it's less than like five minutes or something. Um, so this is this is the first time that I I published to to Tableau Public. Um, uh, some of the things that I I learned from doing that um, are that. There's only certain fonts that, um, which you know, it's kind of like for those of you who have, who have published Dashboard Tableau Tablet Public, like, yeah, obviously. But um, if you don't know that, um, if you've never never published a Tableau Public, there's only certain fonts that that work. Um, so when I when I picked my my font, which was Palatino Linotype, I thought that was a cool font. Um, when it when it uploaded to to Tableau Public, it switched it to, to something else, and all the, all of the the text got all, all out of whack. And so I ended up having to change it to to Georgia, which is one of the uh, compatible fonts. There's there's a list that you can you can find um, just pretty easily, but just something to to be aware of. Um, the other thing was I put my information button on here. If you put it on the right side like this, when you upload it to Tableau Public, something weird happens where it kind of squishes, at least for me, and maybe it was even the browser I was using, but uh, it kind of like squishes the, the tooltip when you when you hover over it and does does weird stuff. So I ended up moving it over over to the left side. This is this is what's synced up with, with Tableau Public. I ended up moving it over to, to the left side here. Um, Oh, one other thing that I, I put in here that that um, that would be an interesting piece of information was the the the, the data quality grade. So you can kind of see um, if the data you were looking at is for that particular state is how, how good is it. Um, so for like Puerto Rico, we can kind of see and maybe, maybe looking at this chart, the, the, you know, I, I might I might have guessed that it's not that great, but I can see okay, okay the, yeah, the the COVID tracking project has deemed that, that it's a C. And I also also did this 
uh, Vizin tooltip. I was kind of playing around with, with a lot of things. Um, so, so you can you can put a visualization within a within a tooltip, and I thought it'd be interesting to see. Okay, now I know it's a C right now, but maybe it wasn't always a C. Um, so, so being able to kind of look at that at that history of the of the data quality grade, that was an interesting thing. Um, did you convert those to numbers, or how did you make the graph with the the letter grades? Yeah, good question. I probably did. Um, so to do the the visit in tooltip, um, you can go go to insert uh, sheets, and then it just whatever whatever uh, uh, worksheet that you want to put in the tooltip, then you can do it that way. And you can also change the the, the height and and the width. Um, okay, so. It's, Data data quality history. If I if I can't find it, um, oh I think I think I may have hidden it. And is it this one? Yes. Okay. That's another. Yeah. If you do a vision tooltip and then you hide it, then it's hard to to find it. You have to right click and and do uh, unhide all sheets from from the point that you did that. Um, yeah. Data quality grade number. I did. Converted, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, so A plus was six, yeah. A, A is five, down to F, which is which is one. Good question. Um, let me switch back to my. Make sure I covered everything. Oh, um, I. So, so for a long time, I did I only did tiled dashboards, and I thought I would kind of branch out. And, and I think I'm I'm a, I'm a convert now to uh, to floating. Uh, it's it's just uh, it's a it's a lot it's a lot easier to kind of you just you just start throwing stuff on here, and then um, you can move it around and, and put it where you want. I think what I was kind of I don't know maybe, maybe reluctant about was was getting things to line up right, but you can still put put stuff together, like I have I have a separate title worksheet here, um, and, and these you, you can still you know bring in like uh, these, this is a in its own um, container, so it's it's in a vertical container that I put two things. So you can still kind of you know get little little tiles if you know if you will, um, and you can also go to layout and you can you can kind of tell it exactly where. You want you want it to, to go as far as like an X and Y position, so you can you know move it like one pixel at a at a time to if you want to get it you know exactly um, where you want it to get. So there's kind of ways to around that. Uh, one other thing I did in here in order to get these these dividers, it's a it's kind of a hack I guess. Um, you can you could bring in a a blank. Um, Object container. I don't know what you call this, um, but you can you can then um, if you go to to layout, you can change the the background to to you know whatever color, and then you can change the height to to one, and and you have you have a line. You can you know change the width, and and you can put it position it where you want. That's a quick quick way to get some you know dividers between different sections. Um, but for the kind of kind of border, I looked at inspiration, you know, on, on on Tableau Public, and there were there were a couple that did did this kind of thing. Um, but that was that was the same same concept, just with the with a border, and then you know you change the floating order so that uh, you know I, I put my my text over over top of that, so it kind of frames it nicely. Um, I did I did do separate worksheets for. For the titles here, because it, it just it gives more flexibility. I wanted the, the titles to be to be dynamic, and there's ways you can do that within the title. Um, but if you do it as a separate worksheet, it gives more um, some more options. So I thought if people were selecting multiple states, then I wanted to, to say selected states, tests and, and cases. Um, and I couldn't I, I couldn't do that with the just using the the title within 
within this worksheet. So that's why I created a separate worksheet to do that. Um, so what did I learn? Uh, don't don't overcomplicate it. One, one other thing that I did that I'm almost embarrassed to, to say, I wanted, I wanted to get these lines. These lines were like not smooth enough for me. I just wanted to get them smoother. Um, and so, so what I did was I kind of did like a moving average of, of the moving average. And I, I ended up ex exporting my, my moving averages to, to Excel and then bringing it back in and doing a moving, moving average on that. If I would do it again, I would, I would not do that. It's just, it's, it's, it was not worth it with that, that extra hassle. Maybe if Tableau gets, uh, there's been a long requested feature of uh, using a worksheet as a data source, maybe, maybe I would try it again. Um, but otherwise say like, like don't, don't overcomplicate it. Um, at least from, from what I did, it wasn't worth it. Um, I mentioned that only certain fonts and, and the info button. Um, a couple, a couple of resources I came across. One was, uh, there's, there's a really good webinar on YouTube from the information lab about, uh, about small multiples, just, just in general, if you're interested. Um, and then there was also another one about, about labeling. Um, so what, what I ended up doing, you know, there was, there's always some way you have, you have to kind of find a hack to label the small multiples. There's no like easy way to do it. I, I end up labeling the first point on, on the line, um, but that kind of falls apart. Like if we do the, the on ventilator, because some of the states are not reporting that. And if they're not reporting it, then there's no, there's no line, which means there's no, there's no label because the label's on the line. Um, so the, so that, that YouTube video gives, gives some uh, kind of, kind of a, a workaround and some, some things to consider. Um, and, and on, on that note, I did, if you, if you want to kind of see the, um, what the, the calculations are, are like, um, let's see if I have it. Oh, here it is. Can you post the resource um, slide again, please? I'm yeah. taking screenshots. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And if you, if you search for small multiples, I just searched for small multiples. These are a couple that, um, that came up. Um, yeah, one is this from the information lab and the other is the Andy, Andy Kriebel. Um, so if you wanted to do like the square, like the typical sort of square, um, small multiples and not the kind of the state or, or some predetermined arrangement, um, there, there's calculations that you can use. And this is, this is in the information lab, but you can, you can find it on if you just search for, for it as well. Um, there, there's these two, there's these two calculations and, and I, I won't go, I'm, I'm probably running up against the end of my time now, so I won't go into too much detail. Um, but you can put these, these calculations, you can just type them uh, like right in here and then make them discrete and put them over there. And then that will give you this, this square, you know, nice, nice square. I used, I used eight here because I knew that would give me what, um, 64 as opposed to seven squared would have been 49, which was not enough uh, as far as the number of squares that I knew I needed to, to get the number of states. Um, I can put these, actually I can put them in the chat even here uh, so that you guys can, can see them. You might have to kind of work with them a little bit um, in order to get them to, to work, but um, that's a good starting point. So, and I think that's all I had. So if there's any, any other questions, I'm happy to, to answer now. Hi, this is Hong. I do have a question. Um, just looking at the, the result to answer the question you asked, is the more test cases, uh, you're testing more, does it uh, results more cases? Uh, is this on the same date that I was assuming the same date, then you have the test number and you have the case number, but the test probably they could have a, I mean, delayed of the reporting of the cases. Is this, um, or I'm not sure the, sh the your base data are there already consider this. Say I'm doing the testing on day one and the cases show up multiple days later. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to see, could be, see I see this, the, the trending on the two lines 
are kind of a simulation kind of delay it. I'm not sure if mm. is your conclusion or what is your conclusion? Different states behave differently. Yeah. Well, I I did not venture to make that that sort of conclusion because I didn't feel comfortable um, with the, the, my level of expertise uh, in in this particular you know field of of data uh, was enough. But you know if if you're kind of curious about um, kind of uh, like understanding the data more. I mean, if you go to, to COVID tracking project mm, on their website, yeah. you can even look at like state by state. I mean, there's kind of overall like, okay, okay got what, it, got it. They, they explain it really, really well. Um, and they also say, you know, state by state because every state reports differently. Um, and they, they give a really good explanation um, for each state kind of how, uh, you know, if, the, if there's any 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 sorts of one one kind of how how they're how they're collecting it, how how the state is reporting it, and how COVID tracking project is interpreting it. Um, but then any any other sorts of things. So so like if I if I looked for for Texas, um, let's see if they what was what was that date? Yeah, was it was it September? Uh, I think it was in the September range where they had that negative. Um, yeah, here we got resulting in approximately 300,000 unit decrease. So, so okay, this is this is why you know there was that decrease. So, if you see something kind of weird, um, there's a good chance that they that they have kind of explained you know at least what what that what that weird thing was. Yep, got it. Thank you. Yep. But good job. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much, Josh. Are there any other questions? If you think of one, feel free to put it in the chat. We can always, um, you know, help it, help you figure out the answer. Um, but if there aren't any other questions, then I think we'll go on to our next presenter, Spencer. Um, Spencer, if you want to start sharing your screen. Okay. Hello, Spencer. Hey, how are you doing, Katrina? Doing well. How are you? I'm good. Um, how do, okay. Can you hear me all right? Yep. All right. Oops. Can you see my screen? <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, thanks uh, uh, for having me, Katrina. I was I was smiling earlier because Katrina and I actually work for the same company, so we had been uh, chatting earlier today. So it's not been very long uh, since I've seen you. Um, so, um, but yeah, my my name is uh, Spencer Bauke, and I'm here to talk to you all a little bit about a Tableau community initiative called Sports Viz Sunday. Uh, I was looking through the guest list or, or people on the call, and I know that there's several people in the audience who have either participated, uh, are friends of mine through it. Um, you know, I saw uh, uh, Vince Bommel's on here, and, and uh, Bommel and uh, uh, Jeff Plattner's on here too. So, um, you know, I've, I've gotten to uh, you know know those guys. Um, you know, through this, I'm sure there's probably more on here that have participated as well. I just didn't make it through the list. Um, so like I said, my name is Spencer Bauke. I'm a consultant at Tessellation. I know you all have probably heard of that company being the Twin City Tugs. Um, so I'm a co-founder of Sports Viz Sunday. Um, you know, I, I like to, to viz in, in Tableau Public and they've, uh, you know, uh, had me as a, a featured author, which has been awesome. I've won a few visit of the days. Uh, I've had the honor of speaking at some Tableau conferences, viz galleries. You know, I've I've, I've really enjoyed being involved in the Tableau public um, community. A lot of great people, a lot of great learning opportunities. Um, uh, and yeah, so that's that's kind of actually how I got plugged into the Sports Viz Sunday community. Is a lot of the work that I've been doing or have done on Tableau Public. Uh, and so here are some of the visit of the days uh, that I've 
that I visit, just a little snapshot of my uh, public portfolio. So, uh, yeah, let's just start off. And I always like to start off either, either if we're presenting at Tableau Conference or we're presenting at a TUG, I always like to have people think about, you know, things that are going on in your life. Like, how have you guys missed sports while they've been off? I, I know I have. I've missed them a ton. Uh, it's those little things that you, uh, you know, take for granted that you come home and, you know, either decompress or you watch on a nightly basis in some of our cases, either your favorite sports team or, or what have you. But, you know, um, so, I mean, I, I want to open this up. I know I don't think everyone's muted. So if anyone wants to just shout out, you know, if they've been missing something about sports during quarantine or. Uh, maybe share one of your favorite uh, sports memories that you that you witnessed. And if no one answers, I'm going to make Jeff do it. <laughs> well, I don't think Jeff has an opinion about sports. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, Russ from Invent. My favorite sports memory. I was at the old Metrodome for Cal Ripken's uh, record uh, number of consecutive games, which was wow. very, very cool. What, that was 3,000 something, 3181? So, yeah, something like that. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is wow. Annie from Honeywell, favorite sports yeah. memory. Big Packer fan was at the game when Des Bryant had the catch. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Anybody else? I'll go, Spencer. Can you hear me? We, I, I was just saying anyone else until you responded, Jeff. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the one I always like to share when this comes up. Um, Timberwolves, Sacramento Kings, game seven, to make the Western Conference Finals only because that's as good as it has ever got <laughs> with the Timberwolves. But I was there. It was, it was a pretty cool moment. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, the reason, you know, the reason I ask is, you know, everybody, most everybody has, uh, you know, a favorite more moment or something that they can remember uh, about sports, if you're a sports fan or not. Um, and, you know, one of my personal uh, favorite sports memories is actually a high school uh, football memory. My brother won a state title a few years back in football, but to get there, um, they were down, I think, 21 points in the last quarter. The last play of the game, like, time was literally um, expiring. The other team was driving down the field. Uh, they ran a running play thinking they were going to run it out for overtime, and one of the linebackers wraps up the running back, strips it, takes the ball, and sprints 80 yards as the clock expires for the win to uh, have them go play in the state game. So that was, that was pretty crazy. Um, but the, the reason I asked you all is that's kind of the point of Sports Viz Sunday is to kind of take these moments and things that we're passionate about and translate that to data viz. So I picked out a couple Minnesota things here. Uh, I know Kirby Puckett and the walk off uh, home run in the World Series, uh, you know, is, is definitely a Minneapolis uh, sports lore. Uh, and then the row the boat gophers over here with uh, Coach Fleck. Uh, I know they've been doing pretty well. So, you know, it's, it's trying to take that same energy and those same, uh, you know, memories and translate them into having fun with data and allowing you to grow and allowing you to practice on things that you're really excited about and not maybe, you know, what you do every day with profit and loss or sales numbers or things like that. So Sports Fit Sunday is a community. It's a community of people that are uh, all in it together to create sports visualizations, to encourage one another, to give feedback, to enable a fun way to practice your skills, and then also to meet people who have the same interests as you. Um, and so that's what we're all about. You know, it's not um, extremely structured, although I'll get into how to participate later. Um, but it's more of a loose collection of people and ideas, uh, you know, that let people have fun while using Tableau. Uh, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about 
how we started a couple years ago, January 2018, which feels like a decade ago now. Um, I got a text message from two folks in London, James Smith, who's a Tableau ambassador, and Simon Beaumont, who's a Tableau Zen master now. Uh, neither of them were at the time. Uh, send me a, a message, you know, hey, like, there's some of these initiatives. We all love sports and have been visiting about it. You know, let's let's put something together that focuses on sports and that we can have fun through. And um, so Sports Viz Sunday was born. Uh, this was our first attempt at a logo. And, and laughs are encouraged because this is pretty bad. Um, but we, we've grown a lot since then. Uh, besides, you know, this kind of scribbling on a, on a caveman wall, it looks like. Um, and we got invited miraculously to speak at Tableau Conference in New Orleans in 2018. And we had about zero and a half percent idea of what was going to happen. And we thought, oh, you know, they've got 50 chairs in this little thing. Hopefully, you know, 10 people show up. Well, you can see there at the bottom right, that's me down in New Orleans, and we had the thing packed, you know, 20, 30 minutes before it started. So uh, we knew we had kind of hit a nerve uh, and a topic that people like to discuss and like to visit about. Uh, and so it only grew from there. Uh, I flew over to Berlin to meet these guys and, and, and talk to the uh, Tableau Conference Europe crowd. Uh, it was really, really fun. You know, we did an interactive session in front of, uh, you know, over 100 people, uh, you know, answering questions. And we did it in kind of like a sports jeopardy format. It was just, it was, it was a great time. Um, and at that point, we were like, okay, you know, this is really cool. We're, you know, filling up a conference room here at TCE. Um, this is, this is, this is really fun to be a part of. And then we got asked to be at the uh, Tableau Conference 2019 out in Vegas. And, you know, we got one of the, the big rooms, which, uh, you know, was kind of intimidating. But as you can see, we, we filled it. And, um, yeah, just another great time. So, you know, we've had people with uh, visits featured in the Viz Gallery. We've had a ton of visit of the days, visits of the week. Um, and, a, and a lot of great memories, whether at Tableau Conference, either here or Berlin or wherever. Um, uh, and then, you know, going out to, you know, the uh, basketball games at these conferences, just a lot of great time spent with a lot of great people, like here in this picture in the top right. Uh, you know, there's Jeff, and I don't know if anyone else on the call is in there, but um, yeah, it's been, it's been great meeting a lot of, a lot of great folks. So at 2019 conference, we had a few goals for 2020. Um, I don't think any of us foresaw uh, what was going to happen this year, but uh, we've tried our best to keep to our goals. So we wanted to involve more people in the process and in Sports Viz Sunday. We've actually added a permanent um, member to the staff, Chris Westlake uh, in England, um, has been added to the staff. We wanted to get more advanced data. So instead of just visiting season outcomes and champions and stuff like that, we wanted to get shot locations and expected goal <clears throat> um, data for soccer and you know spin rates on fastball stuff or you know breaking balls stuff like that that would really drive people's curiosity into visiting their data uh, more intentionally and we wanted people to collaborate we wanted to create more of a community so those were some of the goals that we set at tableau conference 19 that we you know took into 2020 and so we've done that uh jacob Olsufka, gave us some awesome Google Trends search data for one of our, uh, our for our April challenges this year. Zach Geis, um, Tableau ambassador, gave us every single shot from the NBA for the past, it was what, 18 years, 
something like that. Kirk Monroe giving us performance data for NHL players every game. And uh, this challenge has not been announced yet, but that's what I'm going to do here in a second. Uh, Pro Football Focus is giving us some really awesome play-by-play, player-specific data for the NFL. So that goes right into this next topic. We wanted more advanced data sets. We wanted people digging in deeper, not just who won the title last year, although that's great and people can do really cool things with that. We wanted to kind of build our community's acumen in terms of really analyzing what they've been given. So uh, like I mentioned, Zach Geis, yeah, since 1997, he gave us all NBA shot locations since 1997. That's a lot of data, 5 million records, you know, and people were able to go in and find amazing stories and create amazing visualizations that just really blew our mind. Right now, our data challenge is Champions League player tracking. So there's a data set out there right now for a current challenge that has locations of players throughout the most recent Champions League games. We also have a data set um, that has the location of every Major League Baseball pitch for the past, I forget the time frame, but it's a lot of data. So if you're looking for a story, if you're looking for something to practice, something to share on public, something to just, if you're interested, you know, uh, if, if MBA is your thing, go in there, take a look. It's fun playing with data that instead of you know, region east and west and north, you know, the, the fields are, you know, the Timberwolves and the, you know, Lakers and stuff like that. It just makes the whole experience a lot more fun. Here's some of the visas that people created just from our MBA month. And actually, um, in the presentation uh, before, Josh showed us the uh, viz done by Zach Geis uh, with the small multiples, which was also a Sports Viz Sunday uh, viz. So there's a lot of things being created, a lot of cool uh, stories being found, and, and these are just some examples. And so we also wanted to collaborate. We wanted to encourage this community that we've built, um, you know, of, of people that are interested in sports. So we wanted to have and we had an Iron Quest month. So if anyone's familiar with the community initiative Iron Quest run by Sarah Bartlett uh, out of England, we submitted the data for her uh, challenge and people used our data set and visualized or you know, produced visualizations for that initiative. We had a month earlier this year where the entire goal was to get people to collaborate. So visits that were shared were only ones that you collaborated with someone else on. Next month, October, we're actually having a collaboration with Workout Wednesday. And I know that Luke Stanky is a frequenter of this Tableau user group. And he is, uh, we're, we're teaming up with him and his, the rest of his team to do a Workout Wednesday that's sports themed. So as you can see, we've really taken these goals seriously this year and we've tried to dig deeper you know go wider and really just make sports Viz sunday a better experience for everybody uh so i don't think i changed my slide title here oh yeah collaboration month no i did sorry um so this next month we're like i'm just telling you we're gonna have a, a workout wednesday challenge and we're providing the data, which is from Pro Football Focus, which is really cool company uh, station or station um, located here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And we are getting data for every rushing attempt the past three years by running back. And we have a lot of different things associated with each run, the down and distance, who ran the ball, what kind of concept, what was the defense running, did they fumble, or did they score a touchdown? So there's a lot of cool data that's going to be coming out in this month. And this is actually the workout Wednesday challenge. I have not shown this to anybody yet, so you guys are getting the first look. So we're doing a little drop down here 
a uh, little drop down menu. We're doing a little sort ascending, descending with our buttons, and it's paginated. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's what we're doing. So this is the, uh, the viz that you need to recreate. Although if Luke asks, you guys haven't seen this yet. I'll trust you. Um, so just another way that we're trying to expand Sports Viz Sunday's reach and scope uh, within the Tableau community. Okay, so how do you get involved? Every single month, we post a data set to our data.world site that has sports data on it. It could be uh, for cricket, it could be for F1, it could be for soccer, NFL, NBA, whatever sport there is out there, we've probably got a data set. And if we don't, we want to hear from you so that we can go and find that data and post it. One of the cool things about this initiative is being able to find out about sports that you have no idea about. I started Sports Viz Sunday not knowing a single rule about rugby. And guess what? I still don't know a single rule about rugby, but we've had lots of data and I've had the opportunity. I just haven't. And even if I tried, I wouldn't understand. So that's why I don't know anything. And that's OK. Um, take that data. Share it on Twitter. Use the Sports Viz Sunday hashtag. The reason we ask you to do that is every single Sunday, I go on Twitter and I search Sports Viz Sunday and I see all the things that have been tagged in Sports Viz Sunday. Now, about a month ago, a betting company out of India tried to use this Sports Viz Sunday hashtag and I had to politely tell them, hey, knock it off. They said, oh, okay, cool. And so they don't do that anymore. But go in there, search Sports Viz Sunday, you'll see a ton of cool content on Twitter uh, that I'm sharing every single week. You can also volunteer to be a guest host. So if you want to be more involved, you're like, hey, this is a cool idea. I love sports. You can volunteer to be a guest host. Send us uh, a data set. It is a win-win situation. You get exposure to the community. You get to be more involved in a community um, uh, initiative. I don't have to spend my weekend nights going and scraping data off the internet. So please volunteer to be a guest host if you want to. We also have our website, sportsvizsunday.com. If you want to go check out uh, blogs that we've posted, a repository of the visas that we've uh, been, you know, that have been submitted to us and the data sets, they're all available there. And then we also have a tracker that if you want to submit a viz uh, so that we can track your name and submission, you can go in there and submit that as well. Also, just to clarify, you don't have to use our monthly data challenge data to be involved. If you have data that is cool, you know, either on your computer, you found it somewhere on the web, and you are making a visualization, share that and just tag us, Sports Viz Sunday. We'll catch it. We'll see it. We'll share it, and we'll, you know, give feedback if, if uh, requested. So, you know, it's not just the monthly data challenge. It's kind of this all encompassing community. And a big thanks to all the people that have been involved. So we have had a lot of people be involved in Sports Viz Sunday to go that went on and, you know, got nominated for titles like Zen Master or Ambassador. These things that Tableau puts together to recognize a lot of contributors in the community. A lot of people have gone from Sports Viz Sunday and into those titles. And it really makes us proud that, you know, people were able to leverage our platform to then, you know, advance themselves, their careers or their personal goals. Uh, some of those are listed here. Um, you know, Jeff on the call, Vince, there's a lot of people that have uh, been involved in our community. And we really thank you because all that we do is we facilitate it and we just kind of set things in motion and everyone else does the rest of the job. And it's really cool to be a part of it. It's really cool to be supported by so many awesome people. And we really appreciate you all. Uh, and so if you're interested in participating, you can reach out to me. You've got a few members of your tug here that are participants. And next month with Workout Wednesday, 
uh, you know, if you're following that initiative, you'll also gain some exposure to us as well. So that's all I have for you all today. Um, any questions? And if you don't, I'm great. I'm great with no questions. I answer, <laughs> I answer those tremendously. Um, I think that there might have been some in the chat. Um, has okay. Sports Biz Sunday ever worked with PGA or LPGA data? Yeah, so we do have, we have drive data in there. Um, so here, actually, I can, uh, let me share my screen one more time. So I know we've had a golf month. We've had several people. If anyone knows the Flairlidges, uh, one of them, I believe, I don't think it was Ken or Keith. I think it was Kevin um, created a viz on one of our golf months. But um, let me see here. Hold on. Yeah, so we did one. Kate Brown was our guest host. And... It's on a golf competition that I really don't know too much about, uh, but you can check out some of that data here. Uh, let's see, there was a couple more questions. Let's see here. Oh, disappointed Twins fans. I got that earlier from, from people. I'm sorry, I'm a Reds fan, you get, I mean, Come on, we've, we haven't been good since the 70s, and I was not alive. Uh, let's see here. Interior records being shattered during this fanless period. Uh, that's actually, that's a great question. Um, so the question is, do you expect any major records being shattered during this fanless period? How can Tableau infographics be used to convey excitement this season. Yeah, I, you know, I would think that they have some sort of metrics on TV viewership and, and seeing how those are affected it, but I'd imagine they're down. Um, the only record I can think being shattered is home court advantage not mattering at all, <laughs> honestly. Other than that, I don't, yeah, I don't have other insights into that. Um, Yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah, I think those are all the questions. So if you have anything that you don't think of, you think of it later, uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, email, whatever, and uh, we'll definitely get back to you. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me, Katrina. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much for presenting. And again, I just want to re reiterate what Spencer was talking about of like how this can be such a great opportunity to one, practice your skill set about things that you know about. Like if you're working on something and you understand the data, it might be easier to identify that maybe your fixed calculation is incorrect or, you know, those types of things. But on the flip side, it can be a great opportunity to dive into a data set that you know nothing about, like rugby or me with any sports <laughs> at all. Um, you know, because a lot of times in our day-to-day -day jobs, we are presented with data sets that we don't understand all of the intricacies of and that in and of itself can be a skill set and yeah if you're at all interested in sports I definitely suggest um, you know trying to get involved even if it's just one time or uh, like Spencer said if it's a different data set than what they have definitely just try and do something you'll definitely learn learn something um, okay, so that rounds out our presentations. So the next thing on the schedule is best thing I learned slash group therapy. So this is a time for, for you guys to get involved. If there's anything that you want to, you know, share as a tip or tidbit that you've uh, learned recently, or if you're stuck on a question, feel free to, you know, unmute yourself or put it in the chat and let us hear what you've learned. Uh, when, one thing that, that 
I came across the other day uh, that I wanted to mention was um, there was a data set. It was, I, I think I first found it on Throwback Thursday and later like they did it on Kaggle and stuff, but it was a complete comprehensive history of Lego, like every set going back to like 1939 or something like that. Uh, every piece count and like the color of every brick, all this, it was great stuff. Um, but when it first came out, Tableau didn't have the relationships uh, component to the, the data model yet. And so I've been taking a look at that these last couple days um, from the, the website Rebrickable. And it's such a more useful data set now that we have relationships that can sort of dynamically change what data it's pulling depending on how you're building out that, uh, that visualization. Um, so yeah. Check it out. I've been tweeting a lot about it because I'm a huge nerd and that's what I do. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to, to, to mention that. Thanks Vince. Every time I see anything related to paw control, paw, is it paw control? Whatever that paw show control, is, I think yeah. of you. <laughs> <laughs> I did now a whenever I see Lego. absurd <laughs> visualization about a children's <laughs> TV show. <laughs> yes. Oh, and uh, Julia Meyer asked how we can get the Zoom background that I have. Um, I, I literally just did a search for fun Zoom backgrounds, was drawn to this one, saved it as an image, and then in Zoom, uh, there's a little kind of upward carrot next to your video icon in the bottom left, and you can choose a virtual background. When you do that, it uh, brings up the list of kind of the standard ones, and there's a little plus symbol on the right where you can add your own. Um, I also grabbed one from the office, uh, if anybody is a, a fan of that one, but no, kind of fun. So I wanted to mention it. <laughs> All right, does anyone else have any questions or tidbits they've learned recently? Perhaps uh, someone has an update on Einstein and the upcoming uh, TC conference. Einstein being the AI component of what, Salesforce and now Tableau? Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen that there are plenty of sessions sort of focused on that. Um, earlier in the, I think it's on the first day on the 6th, um, they have the, they have the schedule organized and labeled uh, by color according to certain tracks, and I think that's how I had first seen it. Um, but yeah, right right out the gate on day one, I think those are the sessions that you want to look for. Also, uh, check out brain dates if you're going to be registering for conference and everything, which I assume everybody will, because uh, it's free and you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Um, I know Jeff Plattner and myself, for example, are, are hosting a couple brain dates. Uh, like Katrina said, if there's something you're interested in, whether it's related to Tableau or not, it's just a really great way to kind of find your people, find those who, who either can synergistically add to what you want to learn about and what you can offer them, or just a way to find friends or find people you might want to collaborate with. Uh, I've, I've met a lot of really awesome people that I never would have gotten the chance to meet if it hadn't been for brain dates these last couple of years. So definitely check it out. Yeah, it's a really great opportunity to, to chat with and rub shoulders with some really great people in the community. So definitely check it out. Um, and I'm guessing they're going to fill up pretty fast. So be sure to sign up if you would like to. Um, I see in chat that Sarah has a question about Tableau extensions. Oh, thank you, Brad. Uh, looking for some resources on that. If anyone else has any other suggestions, feel free to either call them out or put them in the chat. All right, um, we are almost to our four o'clock time. I just want to again say thank you for joining our presentation and listening to us. Again, thank you to our presenters. Um, 
if you are interested in presenting, even if you feel like you're not, you know, super advanced or anything like that, definitely feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to help uh, maybe create an idea or talk about it. And again, there's all levels of people on here. So if, if there's a beginner topic, uh, we're very happy to, to hear about it or to learn about it. And to hear, you know, your, your experience, because it's going to be different than everyone else's. Um, so I don't know, our people interested in chatting or hanging out afterwards, uh, we can stay on for maybe half an hour or so and just say hi. It's nice to see more faces. <laughs>